good day, and how are you? Oh, just fine, you say? Well, okay, that'll do. The news today is full of things. Thing ones, thing twos, and things that sing. Things that fly and dance and rhyme with hat. We'll be talking in extent about a certain cat. Now, if you please, sit down, grab some juice. For today, Rocket Boom News is all about Seuss. The story begins on March 2nd, 1904, when Springfield, Massachusetts welcomed Seuss Geisel, Theodore. For the purpose of ease, we'll call him Ted. It's shorter and better for rhyming, she said. Ted left Springfield as a teenager, thirsty for knowledge. In order to gain it, he attended Dartmouth College. Of the magazine The Jack-O-Lantern, he became editor-in-chief, although his tenure ended early due to drinking mischief. To continue his work without being cut loose, Geisel began signing his work with the pen name Seuss. So after Dartmouth, Seuss moved to Oxford. Philosophy and literature, he studied as he could. It was there that he met Helen Palmer, his wife, and they returned to the US for the rest of her life. He decided to pursue a career in cartoons. He was published in Saturday, the post of late afternoons. But the bulk of his career was spent drawing for oil. Ads for 15 years luckily didn't spoil. His passion for politics, too old for the draft, he contributed making the most of his craft. He made army training movies and learned animation, in addition to contributing to many publications. Life, Judge and Vanity Fair, and a children's magazine whose name I can't say on air. 27 rejections for his first book, what a feat, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. He had thinks so fantastic, they could think on their own, and Seuss wrote each of these thinks right into a poem. Rhymes about foxes and a sour kangaroo, about the kindness of elephants from the jungle of new, about dairy and meat that might make you squeam, because it's certainly odd to eat food that is green. Though Geisel wrote stories without moral in mind, his books were no stranger to things of this kind, and he isms are plenty, they're worse to be found, turning books written for kids into something profound. Internationalism, the arms race, equality and so, Richard M. Nixon, will you please go? He wrote books for grown-ups, a few that you'll know, popular for graduates, oh the places you'll go. When Ted didn't illustrate for the books of his league, he used his name spelled backwards, Theo Lesieg. According to Life magazine, 1954 May, illiteracy grew from dull books of the day, so William Ellsworth Spaulding made a list of 348 words that he missed. Spaulding thought that the kids who knew vocab were nifty, and asked Geisel to cut the list down to 250. 236 words, out came that. The best-selling success, The Cat in the Hat. Retaining imagination, verse and style, it could be read by young humans who only read for a while. Geisel's works were adapted and animated. The first was Horton Hatches the Egg, which nobody hated. In 1942, it was a Looney Tunes edition, featuring a suicidal fish and Catherine Hepburn imitation. Chuck Jones, friend and colleague, in 1966, would throw an animated Grinch into the mix. It's considered a classic and thought more than okay, and it's broadcast each year around Christmas Day. Mrs. Geisel was ill, I'm sure that you've heard. 1967, October 23rd. It was on this day that Helen died. She committed suicide. The following year, in 1968, Audrey Stone Diamond married Ted, her old mate. Theodore Geisel said this of your children. You have them, I'll entertain them. Then, he died following illness in 1991. He was cremated and his widow would become the guard of his legacy at Seuss Enterprises. Audrey protected his work from any bad surprises. She approved live action films of The Grinch and of Cat. She was fine with Jim Carrey, but of Mike Myers wasn't that. She declared no more, but still allows CGI. And in 2008, Horton received praise that was high. In Orlando, Florida, Seuss Landing was created. Its lack of straight lines made people elated. Into over 15 languages, he has been translated, and 222 million copies means people are satiated. 11 TV specials and a Broadway musical, named none other than, you guessed it, it was called Seussical. And if that's not enough to prove his work wasn't shoddy, two Emmys, two Oscars, a Pulitzer and Peabody. Today, March 2nd, his birthday, we celebrate Seuss, whose brain worked so freely it ran around loose. He was brilliant, playful, and wrote books we love now. So, if you please, let us all take a bow for an author who allowed imagination to bloom. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Love, Rocket Boom.